Hello and welcome to the House Call Pro Scheduling, Dispatch, and Payments webinar. My name is Abby. I'm on the customer success team here and I'll be taking you through things today. I did want to start off by guiding you to the account settings up here in the right corner. You can see in the corner my picture in the circle. You just click there and go into account settings. For you it'll be your initials or your picture of course. Here you'll find where to put in your company profile information. Set up any additional employees you have. Your price list can be added and edited right here. You can put in the business hours and if you have online booking, your booking windows will be set up in here as well. And then again for online booking, if you're on the modern or advanced plan or have the add-on, service area is going to be set up in this section. And then text messages, this is for the custom SMS. Again, for modern and advanced plans or any add-ons. Below you'll see billing and this is for your House Call Pro account with us. You can find your invoices in here. And then payouts, this is for our credit card processor. If you are using ours, uh, the deposits, excuse me, yeah, deposits and payouts will be located there, as well as in the dashboard in this icon that says my money on the top left. Now in House Call Pro, there are three ways in which you can create an invoice or an estimate. The first is by clicking this plus new button in blue up here. When you click on that, you'll have the drop down option with job, estimate, event, or customer. And job is an invoice in our system. Those two terms are interchangeable. So a job is an invoice and an invoice is a job. The second way is going to be in the customer profile right here. You'll click into your customer list, find the customer profile you want to create a job or estimate for. And once in that profile, you'll see those two big buttons in blue. The third and final way is by clicking into your schedule here on the top left. You can see when I hover over the calendar here on the Sunday, this plus sign and green, a little green circle pops up. You can click directly onto any part of the calendar and it'll automatically give you the drop down. So if we went for Thursday at 10, it's going to give us the option for job, estimate, or event. So we'll select job. From here, you can put in your customer name. As soon as you start typing the customer name, it will propagate everything that has that name in it. And you can see here it pops up in here. Or you can add a new customer. You'll also see we have customer tags that you can enter as well as job tags. Customer tags are going to be attached specifically to the customer profile throughout its lifetime in your account. If you want to mark uh, excuse me, track how many people are coming to you through HomeAdvisor and being converted into real jobs. You can do that with HomeAdvisor tag or Yelp. You can type in anything you want at any time and then just hit enter. The job tag will be specifically for that job. You'll also have this private note section for internal use only. Uh, so if you aren't supposed to be going into the garage or don't pet the dog, that'll be located right here. And then attachments, we can put in PDFs or images from both the mobile phone uh, app and web portal. So from here, we're going to click next and go to the second step, which is adding line items. This is going to pull directly from that price list that you saw in your account settings. You can click the blue plus button up here if you want to look at the entire price list menu, or you can simply start typing in and everything that has that word in it, just like with the customers, will drop down here. You can scroll through to find which one you want. So we'll go ahead and add that. And then we'll go ahead and also add a tune-up. You can change the pricing on this at any point. You can edit everything in the description, on the line item title. All of the above can be changed, again, both in the web portal and mobile app, which I will show you. You can scroll down to the bottom to set up a discount by dollar amount or percentage. So we're going to go ahead and give Jennifer a 5% discount because she is friends and fam. And keep in mind, whatever you type in in this description section will appear on the invoice. So do be careful with that. If you write something about an angry or rude customer, that might become 100% real quick. Now from here, we're going to go to next and schedule this out. You can see it automatically appears on the portion of the schedule that I actually clicked on when I was creating this. But if I want to drag and drop it somewhere else, we'll just change it that way. Or we can just click once and it'll pop up with this. Click that. You can click on the date to change it. And we're going to leave that though. Or you can change the time. 
So at 10.30, yeah, I'll say till 1.30 p.m., not a.m., and confirm. You can see that it has expanded and moved. And then to dispatch, you're going to go up here right underneath that green save button, and you'll see this dispatch edit team icon. You'll just select who you'd like to send on the job, and then click done. And you now see all three faces appear on the corner. And then the arrival window is going to be located in the middle. You can see right here, this is how the customer will view this arrival window. So instead of having an angry customer, if we're running a little late because of traffic or because of another job, we have this little buffer. We can say instead of arriving at 10.30 a.m. on the dot, we'll get there anytime in between this half hour range or hour or two. And then you can set that as the default if you'd like to have a half an hour or whichever one for every job. You can also set up your recurrence right here. If you look all the way over on the far right underneath save, this recurrence little circle with arrows appears and you can set up a daily, weekly, monthly, or annual occurrence. If you want to do a quarterly one, you'll just click monthly and select every three months. From there, you'll finish this out and then click done, although I'm going to click cancel. You'll also see this notify customer is checkmarked. This is going to default to whatever the customer profile is set to. So if you do have not notifications on like Jennifer, you will see this little check mark off. Uh, it'll be there. <laughs> Excuse me. If you want to not or if you don't want to send this specific notification for this one time, you'll just unclick it and it will not send an email and text notification letting Jennifer know that this has been confirmed. But we're going to go ahead and send that. So then you can see what that looks like on my mobile phone. Let me just pull over that mobile app for you. And then you'll be able to see that. Give me one moment if you don't mind. And here we go. You can see here the little pop-up for the text message. It's confirming with Jennifer that we have scheduled AJ Weber, the technician from Abby's Home Services, it's set to arrive on Thursday, February 7th, between 10.30 a.m. and 11. And then you can click into the job details to see that, that details page, of course. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and open up the job that we have set. And this is our job detail page on the mobile app. Once we're on our way, we're going to go ahead and click on my way. And let Jennifer know we are en route. And she'll get this drop down for the text message saying AJ Weber is en route. Once we arrive on site and we're ready to start actually doing the work, we'll click start right here. You'll see it's in progress now. There won't be any uh, updates for that specific one for the customer. Once we scroll down, you can see all the information for the specific job, including the line items, which can be edited by clicking this little pencil icon in the top right corner. If we need to add anything at any time, we'll just go ahead and select that from our list. We'll add it and click Done. And if we need to get approval for this additional service, and if Jennifer is there in person, we can click on Approve in the upper left corner. And before the work starts, we're going to get the signature approval. And there we go. It's been saved. You can scroll down. You'll also see job tags private notes and photo documents still appear here at the bottom. Once we've completed all the work, we'll click finish and it will let Jennifer know we have finished this job with a quick little text and again that job detail page that we'll click in. And it's not invoicing at this point in time. It's just letting her know we have finished. You can see all of the details for the specific job below. Then once we go back in here, you can take payment or send the invoice directly from the top section. If you click send, it'll pop up with all these options. But if we want to take payment in person, we'll go ahead and click pay. If you have a check payment, I recommend putting the check number in the payment notes section. Then from here, it'll give you the four options for credit card, cash, check, or other. You'll select credit card only if you are using our credit card processor. Any other credit card processor is going to 
be other. You'll select that and then go through the normal workflow for that specific processor. But we'll go ahead and select check for this one and accept payment and then confirmation. Exit out and then I'll bring you back over to the web portal so you can see how this is updated. I'm going to move this out of the way and then here we go. We'll just refresh the House Call Pro web portal and we'll be able to see our updates here. Now all the things we have completed are in blue. It'll show travel duration, on job duration, and timestamps everything. You can scroll down to see on the left the approval signature here for the amount that it was approved and the date. You can also see the payment history has appeared and it shows that it was a check taken for this amount. If you need to, you can refund this or delete in this section as well. You'll also see the activity feed. It'll show what each employee has done, what the action was taken, and if it was on an iPhone, web portal, or Android. And if you're integrating with QuickBooks Online, you'll have this section up here at the bottom of an invoice as well. Because mine's not a live account, I have errors, but there will be a link there for yours and you can click into your QuickBooks account directly. There are three points in time in which we do push information over to QuickBooks, and the first is with this Finish button. Anytime you click Finish on an invoice, that will push over to QuickBooks, as well as sending the invoice and taking payment. These three, Finish, Invoice, and Pay, they all push over to QuickBooks, so you don't need to manually input any information. Now, if we did not finish this job today and we needed to return another day, maybe we need to order a part and come back next week, we're going to add a segment. To add a segment, you'll click on this gear and wrench icon in the upper right corner, and then the drop down for add segment or copy to new will come over. We'll say copy to new segment, so we're going to take all of this information to the second segment. You can see up here, segment number one, copy, but we're going to name this day two. And you can see it's still attached to the first invoice number just with a dash one now, or excuse me, dash two. If you do copy over, you're going to need to zero out the amount on each item just so it doesn't charge twice when we do go to invoice. You'll also need to schedule this out as you would the first segment because the system's not going to assume that you're going back the next day at the same time. We have no idea when you're going to go back, so you'll need to let the system know. And then you'll click on my way, start and finish as you normally would for the other segments. All right, now back to this. I'm going to go ahead and click on invoice now. And you can see the invoice preview here. The payment history appears as well as the signature for approval. Invoice settings you can drop down here on the right side and you can add segments by clicking on this section in the navigation bar. If you've taken a picture, you can also see there will be, excuse me, a little paper clip icon that appears right next to this. And if you select that, you'll be able to choose any or all or none of your attachments or photos to add in. And you'll just click send invoice, which you can edit at any time, and that'll send off. And now it's been sent. You can also see here that Jennifer Pitt in the customer profile section, it says this customer bills to V. Scully. This is because this is a parent-child relationship that we set up for this property manager and tenant. The tenant is Jennifer Pitt, so she's received all these notifications up top for scheduling on my way and finish. However, the invoice is going to be sent to V. Scully, her property manager. When you're creating a contact our customer, there will be a section that says this customer bills to, and that's where you're going to type in the property manager name. You need to make sure that you do have a separate customer profile set up for the actual property manager first. So there are two separate accounts, and then you just link them by saying this customer bills to and filling it in there. This is also how you're going to set up an estimate. Everything will appear the same except for these last couple items are going to be getting approval 
and copying over to a job. If on the estimate you'd like to add options, you will do the exact same thing that you would do for these segments. You'll click on the gear icon, at, gear and wrench icon that did appear here before. And then once you have more than one option you'll, or a segment, you'll need to come over here and copy to a new segment. And that'll bring another one over. You'll see segment three. Or if you want a brand new one with absolutely nothing on it, you just click the plus sign on the right, right side here in segment four. This is how you're going to also create those estimate options. Now when we go back to the dashboard, you're going to see right here in the second row this job section and the estimates over here. These both have little eye icons. When you click on the eye icon, this is going to take you into your reports. You can configure these however you like, simply by clicking the table columns. We can unclick whatever we want. We can remove and add anything at any time. And if we want to see what unpaid invoices we have that we're still waiting on, you'll go over here to the payments column, click this funnel on the upper right corner, and then we're going to select due and sent to customer. And you'll see all the due amounts that we have for these, this specific list of invoices. You can click into each separate invoice to access the detail page. If you need to export, you'll click this book up here with a little X. It'll give you the option to export or download uh, the CSV directly to your computer. I recommend sending it to your email. The format of that is just a little bit nicer for some reason, so I always recommend doing that. Now what I recommend you do from here, if you can, right after we've wrapped up, practice your workflow through at least five times. I think five is a great number. It's what all my most successful pros start off doing. Create your own customer profile, set the notifications to be sent, make sure you put your mobile phone number in the mobile phone section and just send everything so you know exactly what the customer is seeing as well as yourself or any technicians. If along the way you have questions, we are a chat-based support, so you'll click on this blue chat bubble in the bottom right corner. This will pop up and you'll see new conversation, and you can just click that to start a new conversation with any of our tech, uh, excuse me, our chat support. These are fantastic people. They're the, some of the most knowledgeable people at this company. I go to them with all my questions, so please do not hesitate to do the same. They're very happy to help, so please be nice to them because they will be very friendly with you. And then if you want to find an answer yourself, you can search through our articles. If you want to check how to do that parent-child setup, the, the top three choices will come up and you can click see more results if it's not in there. You can also click at the top navigation bar help center to access that web page at any time. If I take you here, I'm going to bring it up. If you do have questions, I highly recommend going through this house call pro simple setup. I created this specifically to go along with this webinar. So any questions that you might have will probably be found in here and it's going to help get the most basic information to you to get your account set up and get you running with it much faster. So definitely check this out. That's all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions at this time, please feel free to chat those in, or you can type them in. I'll leave this window open for just a few more minutes. All right, thanks so much. Have a good one.